If you're touching, touching lives in this place, don't do it. It helps me. Don't do it. It helps me. So this is my heart cry to him. Savior. Savior. Why don't you heal my humble cry? Why long others thou art called? <laughs> I'm going to take that one more time again. It says, Savior, Savior, why don't you hear my own Come on, sing it. So call him Savior. And I'm sorry. Call him Savior. Can you just lift up your hands and just call upon his name? Oh, 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 oh. Savior here. Connected to the Father this evening. Oh, no, 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 no,
This is the generation of them that seek you. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Come on. Express yourself to him. You know the reason why you are here? Humanity came to meet divinity. Come on. Talk to him. Come on. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Forget about who is sitting beside you. Can you get connected? Just get connected. Mando shaprando secret de libra sakaya. Is somebody praying? Can you cry out to him? Can you call upon him? Come on, call upon him. Come on, call upon him. Sebarada barodo bobo rodo bobo. Mandele pretele de broko bobo rogo bobo. Is somebody praying? Call upon your father. Can you talk to him? Sebarada lada barodo bobo rodo bobo rodo bobo. Pretele de breke sodo robo koso brakata. Irana mama rodo lo. Yeah. When you are here, when you are here, when you are here, <laughs> when you are, when you are here, when you are here, when you are here. Somebody cry out to your father. When you are here, sickness must melt away. Arthritis must give way. Glaucoma must give way. Ah, so you are when you are here, when you are you you When you are here, when you are here. come on, when you are here, 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 when you is somebody praying? Come on, cry out to your father. Come on, Ah, parata. Shabarada, babarada, ledebo. Come on, 
cry out to him. Don't be tired, cry out to him. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, call upon him, call upon him. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. 30 seconds more. Go ahead. Go ahead, express your worship to your father. Easy. Express your worship to your father. Man, take a baraka baroko to logoba. Somebody make sure you are praying. Leso no more ne mo se ye ne marata yada. Ere gede le de baraka di de gosh. She prokonza. Man, take a break. Get a little more gold. Matalaba. Hey. When you are here, 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 when you are when you are here, 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 when you are when you are here, when you are when you are here, Shabara Daba, come on, go ahead. When you are here, when you are here, when you are here, hey, listen. So the song says, hey, way make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. There is who you are. Come on, sing it if you know the song. We make. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Go ahead. Express your worship to him. Hey, hey, we make. Open your mouth and bless him. Bless his holy name. Wave your hands and lift your voice. Give him praise. Give him glory. He's the way maker. He makes a way in the wilderness. And a path amongst the mighty waters. There is no God like he. There is no one greater than him. He's the great God of all gods. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. Open your mouth and exalt him. Call his name. Bless his name. You wipe the way all things. You mend the broken heart. You're the answer to it all. Jesus, you wiped away all things, you mend the broken heart, 
the answer to it all jesus open up your mouth say way make way make a miracle promise keep light in the darkness that is who Say we make a miracle. You are a promise keeper. Darkness. That is who you are. Say that is who you are. Say. That is whom you are saved. And that is whom you are. Lord, we give you praise. We bless your name even tonight because you will make a way for someone. We thank you because you are about to open doors. You are about to open doors. You are about to command every mountain that stands before your children to be lifted. We thank you for your great power and grace. Let your name be glorified. Wave your hands and give him praise. Wave your hands and bless him. Wave your hands and bless him. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. One more time. You are the Lord, let your name be glorified. I wish you can lift your hands and let's sing it to him. You are the Lord, let your name be glorified. We give you glory. All of the honor and honor, you are. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. Pick the temple. You are the Lord, you are the Lord, let your name be glorified, we give you glory, all of the honor, you are, you are, you are. you will do tonight and uh, you are you are the Lord, the Lord Jesus let your name be glorified we give you glory we give you glory all of the honor Say you are the Lord, let your name be glorified. 
Father, glorify your name in this place. Glorify your name in the life of your people. Do what only you can do. Surprise everyone here tonight. And let your name be highly exalted. Let even the heathens know that our God is alive. And alive forevermore. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Can you do something prophetic? I'd like you to clap for the next 60 seconds. <laughs> clap your hands, O ye people. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. The shouting side is the winning side. The shouting side is the victorious side. The shouting side is more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walk up to three, four, five people and tell them you are ready for a surprise tonight. Walk up to two, three, four, five persons and tell them Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. Tonight, not tomorrow, not next week. Tonight is your set time. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Well, go ahead and shout if you want to. Go ahead and. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Glory be to God. Just worship Him for a minute. For His mercy. Oh, 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 one more time, Lord, be to God in the highest name for His mercy. Amen. For His mercy. Glory be to God in the highest. Sing it to Him tonight. Glorify Jesus in the highest. For His mercy. The glory of God is in this place. Oh, His mercy. Shora barada la bara. For His mercy. Mercy is endured forever.
Clap your hands one more time. Hallelujah. The song you just sang declares that his mercy endures forever. So God will never get tired of showing us his mercy. And that's why you are here tonight. That God will put a signature on your life. A signature of his power, of his glory, and of his grace. For someone, God has designed that tonight he will wipe off shame and reproach from your life forever. It has to come to an end tonight for somebody. Are you ready tonight? I hope you didn't come as a spiritual consultant. You know spiritual consultants. They, they are never tired of observing what is happening in the house of God. But they will never receive. I hope you are not here to consult. You are here to receive. Those of you at the back, are you here to receive? I, like, I love that. Amen. So please make sure you are not distracted. Make sure you focus and be ready for what God will do in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. I said God bless you. Everything that comes out of my mouth today is prophecy. Are you ready? God has anointed my tongue tonight. The Bible says that the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Let me ask you a question. How will God change your story tonight? The answer is simple through his spoken word. Nothing more than that. There's no oil here. There's no handkerchief. Are you hearing me? There's no salt, and I don't do those things. It's only one formula through his spoken word. In John chapter 6, in verse 29, they asked Jesus, what shall we do that we may do the works of God? Jesus said, you don't need to do any work. Only believe in him whom he has sent. All you need to do is believe. Have faith tonight. Believe that God is here present and ready to do the impossible in your life and believe in his servant that he has sent to you. The Bible declares in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 20, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Amen. So I like your faith to be open and ready to receive tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, um, because for those of us that are here, not for those online, those of us here in Meiduguri, you would realize that, um, just bring it down a little bit, sir. Thank you. You realize that the, we, are, we are at the peak of the heat season. Is that true? So I know how discomforting it can be sitting down where you are right now. I know many of us are really perspiring and um, it's quite uncomfortable being here. But you came here because you love God. And you came here because what God will do in your life and your destiny is more important than temporal discomfort. Is that true? I think just before I came up, I checked, um, I checked the weather and I discovered the temperature is 42 degrees. Amen. It's not easy to survive here. Please, whatever you do. Amen. Um, please, don't, don't increase the mic too much. I'm loud enough today. Thank you. So it's not easy to stay in Meiduguri. Amen. Amen. And that's why God will give us double, double today. Amen. In Jesus' name. Now let me start by saying this. This is going to be a word of encouragement to some of us here. Uh, particularly because, you know, when you keep coming for services again and again. And 
you see God touch people, you see God visit people, you see people share their testimonies of the things that God has done. And um, sometimes you wonder when it will be your turn. Please do something to this sound. It's either some speakers are not working or it's too thick. Please, thank you. And many of us who have been waiting on God for several things to manifest in our life. Now what I'm saying is inspired by what I'm saying is inspired by a discussion I had with two women yesterday and a video I watched online this afternoon. Um, many of us seem to have waited long enough for certain things to manifest in our lives. Please listen carefully. And it almost looks as if you are waiting in vain because the more you wait, the more you don't see these things being fulfilled or manifesting. Some of you trusting God for a job opportunity. Some of you settlement in marriage or in one aspect of your life or the other. I just want to encourage us. You see, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3 from verse 1 that to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heavens. Your life carries with it a divine purpose. And because of that, there are certain things that God has allocated to a particular time. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful in its time, not your time. You understand? He makes all things. You are expecting God for things. Or you are expecting things from God. And the Bible says he makes all things beautiful, not in your time. That's why you don't get discouraged when the things don't come the time you want them to. Just because they don't arrive when you want them to does not mean that they are late. We need to understand the basis of timing when judging issues that concerns our destiny. When judging issues that concerns our receiving certain things from God. I hope I'm communicating. So, he makes all things beautiful in its time. That thing that you are expecting from God has a time that it will manifest. And trust me, if you believe that your life is in the hands of God, if you believe that God is not known, God is not known to make any mistake with your life, then in as much as what you are expecting has not arrived, it doesn't mean that God is late. And it doesn't mean that those things are not going to come to pass. The Bible says... That after you have suffered for a while, I think that's First Peter chapter 5, verses 10. He will strengthen you, he will establish you, and he will settle you. So I just want to encourage a few people. You're probably, you've been here for a while, waiting for when you two will share your testimony or see certain things manifest. And you're already weary in waiting. I like to encourage you, it may be tonight, it may be next Sunday, it may be God knows when, but I like to encourage you to keep trusting in God, to keep holding on. The Bible says that we should not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap the reward if we faint not. If we faint not. The Bible says, though it tarry, wait for it, it shall come to pass, it shall not tarry. In other words, it will not be late. That's the meaning. How can you say, though it tarry, wait for it? And then in the same verse, in the same sentence, you are saying, it shall not tarry. You just said, though it tarry, and now you are saying, it shall not tarry. That's how King James expresses it. But the real meaning there is that even though it takes time, it will not come late. God will surely bring to pass and manifest everything that he has spoken concerning you. Somebody say amen to that. Well, I wish you just listen to what I'm saying because for somebody, that's your miracle service message. Okay? My desire is that God visits everybody. But just in case you leave this place not receiving and you know that your faith was intact, that it means that there is the time for the manifestation of what you are expecting is yet to come. But you trust God to know that it will not escape you. Do you believe that? Good. 
You see, when you are working with God, you need to be patient. One of the virtues you will need to cultivate. And that's why even in the midst of trials and tribulations, God, one of the reasons why we go through trials and tribulations is because God wants to cultivate in us the virtue of patience. For God, as far as God is concerned, virtue is more important than, you know, manifestation of tangible things. So if you walk with God, you'll have to learn to be patient. That it has not arrived according to your time does not mean it will not arrive. Or it doesn't mean that it is late. No. Maybe your time is the wrong timing. And then you need to set, sit back and wait for God's time. And I, I, I assure you that God's time is always the best. Have you heard that statement before? Out of desperation, sometimes we don't believe it, but it's the truth. God's time will always be the best. God's time will always be the best. The butler of Pharaoh that Joseph interpreted his dream as if the butler had spoken to some influential people as soon as he got out of prison to say, help this man. Joseph would have come out of prison, maybe. The highest thing he would have received was a pardon. He wouldn't have stood before Pharaoh. So he had to remain for two more years. All through those two years, he would have this, you know, thought that God had forgotten him. Some, like some of us. Maybe some night he, while he slept in jail, he would have even cursed God, self. Said all kinds of things. Maybe he would have even stopped praying. But God knew that it was better for him to be delayed in the prison. So that his coming out of prison will be a Kairos season for him. He came out when Pharaoh had a problem. And that was what took him from jail to becoming the prime minister. So when God keeps you waiting on him over an issue, God is not a fool. He doesn't think like we think. He knows the right timing for that thing to manifest. So if God decides that you will not get married this year, as far as God is concerned, it doesn't, that, it doesn't mean you are not fulfilled simply because you are not married this year. God may be saving the best for next year. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm talking to some people, not everybody. Okay? So we need to learn to be patient. Even me, the man of God that God sends to you. There are times I pray over issues and God does not answer according to my time. And I've learned to wait. And it's okay to grumble when you are waiting. Are you hearing me? I grumble too. It's okay to grumble. You know, in the military, they say grumbling is allowed. Uh -huh. And you know, the kingdom of God is like military now. It's kingdom, military. So, so you grumble all you want. And sometimes when you are waiting in those seasons, God will not fast track the manifestation of those things simply because he wants to suit your emotions. Or simply because you have cried enough. God is not moved by our tears. He's moved by our faith. So no matter how much you cry and cry for mercy and sow seed and everything, God will not fast track the manifestation of that thing. What he will do in that season of your life is he will lubricate your life with spiritual experiences. So maybe you are praying, trusting God for financial breakthrough and then um, you go to sleep not having anything coming to you and then in your sleep God will show you driving a Maybach how many of you know that mess this Maybach in fact you felt it so much as if it was real when you woke up your hand was on the air like this and you know what woke you up it was the heat of that your one room the heat that woke you up Amen. So God will lubricate in those seasons just to keep you waiting. He will lubricate you with spiritual experiences. Once in a while, he will send somebody to bless you. Just use this one and wipe your, your sweat. But you'll wait. Are you hearing me? 
but at the appointed time. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Give me Genesis 21 verse 1. Let me finish this and go to the message for tonight. At the appointed time. At the appointed time, God would definitely come true for you. It says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. He said, according to the time of life, in Genesis 18, that's what he told them, by this time next year, they had waited long enough, next year was even too far, but the Bible says in this verse 1 of 21, that the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And I'm here to announce for some people that today is the day God will visit you. Yeah. Today is the day. You know, the day that God will bless you or honor you or favor you, nobody will tell you. It will be like every other day. Are you hearing me? You will wake up broke like other days and start doing your calculation. Okay, with this last 1,000 in my account, I'll beg somebody to send me 100 naira so that when I withdraw, the charges will not touch the 1,000. Are you hearing me? I've been there before. Believe me. So I know what you are going through. Eh? Because they will not allow you to withdraw because of bank charges. You get it? Imagine going to an ATM and slotting your card with all sense of... And all you are trying to withdraw is 1,000. If you are at that stage in life now, make sure you dress well when you go to the ATMO. Dress well. Dress well. Clean up well. Stand very well like a millionaire. Somebody is trying to withdraw before you say, no, don't worry, go, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> huh? Look for a big key holder. <laughs> you know all these big key holders that look like car keys? Uh, look for it and put it on your finger like this and be brandishing it. And, and let them think your car is parked at the other side of the road. I didn't say lie and say you have a car. I just said, uh -huh. Amen. Then when the coast is clear, go there and withdraw your 1,000 honorably. Amen. So probably, like every other day, you have planned. You, you called Ugochuku and say, send me 200 naira so that when they remove bank charges, I can remove 1,000. And then you didn't know that that was the day God has decided poverty would terminate from your life forever. I like the way God blesses, I tell you. Whether it's financially, whether it's academically, whether it's spiritually, maritally, on every aspect of life, there is a way God blesses his children. The blessing comes with a sense of settlement. You know what settlement is? So if it was financially, it's that kind of alert that will come that you'll not even think whether you'll be poor again. May it happen to you this month. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm saying all this because today is someone's day for a divine visitation. I thought your amen will be louder. Hallelujah. So let's get to the word briefly and then we'll stand to pray. This is the second of the seven super Sundays and it's also a special miracle service for the month of April. Clap your hands for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. We've been on the seven super Sundays. How many of you were around last week? It was a wonderful time. The supernatural. Today we will continue. I just want to share something for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then we will pray. We are going to pray. Tonight we are going to take time to really pray some things, settle some things in prayer, and then I will speak over your life and minister to those as God will have it. I want to talk briefly on what I titled the supply of the spirit. The supply of the spirit. Philippians chapter 1 verse 19. The supply of the spirit. For some of us who love God and want to grow spiritually, you will really enjoy this short message. 
the supply of the spirit for i know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and what the supply of the spirit of jesus christ the supply of the spirit through your prayer and the supply that means it is through your prayer that the supply of the spirit will come galatians chapter 3 verse 2 and verse 5 Galatians chapter 3 verse 2 and verse 5. And I want to apologize to those who are streaming online. I noticed that the network has not been too good. Please bear with us. Every time uh, the transmission breaks, just wait a little bit. Go, go back and refresh it, okay? Uh, for those of you watching via YouTube or Facebook, or you just go on Mixellar. I think Mixellar is quite uh, dependent. So please bear with us, okay? But ensure you are part of the service by all means. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith? He said, therefore he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith. Take note of the phrase. Supply of the spirit. You find that in both verses in Galatians chapter 3. So there is a spiritual concept. Um, as you journey with God. That we refer to as the supply of the spirit. It is important that you understand this concept. Because it makes for everything that you will receive from God. You know, the God we serve is spirit. John 4, 24. God is spirit. That means that he is spirit and he dwells in an invisible realm. So if you must interact with him, you must interact with him based on the frame of his reference. You are interacting with him in an invisible dimension. The fact that it is invisible doesn't mean it is unreal. The fact that it is unseen does not mean it is unreal. The realm of the spirit is a very real place. It has civilizations just like we have on earth. We have different civilizations. It has geographical locations in the realm of the spirit. It has people. It has beings just like you have in the natural it has transportation system. Everything you find in the natural is only a dummy representation of what exists in the realm of the spirit. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 3 that through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds, the ages, every dispensation of human existence were framed, were carved out from, were fashioned from the word of God. So that we will know that the things that are, are seen were not made from things which are visible. So everything you see was made from an invisible realm. Everything you see is a copycat of something that exists in the realm of the spirit. If you have transportation system on earth, physical transportation system, they are all representative of transportation systems in the realm of the spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Clothes is not a natural phenomenon. Clothes are spiritual realities. The Bible speaks of the garment of praise. Most of the angels and the beings in scripture that men interacted with had on them garments. Even when Jesus appeared to John in the Isle of Patmos in Revelations chapter 1, John was careful to describe him as putting on a raiment. But you see, what clothes applies to you in the natural is quite different from what clothes applies in the supernatural. And that is why the concept of the supply of the Spirit must be understood by every believer because it is that phenomenon that allows us to receive from God. We are receiving from an unseen dimension. We are receiving from an invisible dimension. But we are material. We are visible. We are tangible. How do you as a tangible person 
receive something that is intangible. The Bible calls it the supply of the Spirit. That means that whatever we receive is first of all in a spiritual state. And then in receiving it, we will need to understand the way by which it can be converted into a material state that is usable by us. If you understand what I'm saying, say amen. amen. For instance, the Bible says in Ephesians 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, has blessed us, not will bless us, not is blessing us, has blessed us. But the Bible says that these blessings are spiritual. They are invisible. You can't see them. But they are real. They are real substance. Only that they are not tangible substance. They are intangible. And they exist in an invisible or an intangible realm. So if these blessings are ours to be utilized on earth, we will need to understand, we will need to first of all believe that they exist there. And then we will need to understand the means by which we can convert it into a tangible form that can be utilized. A good example for that is there are under the earth, miners will tell you that there are things referred to as natural resources, raw materials, isn't it? These raw materials go through a process of refinement and conversion and they produce products that are good for the service of humanity. For instance, crude oil is black in color and it smells. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It smells. But when it goes through series of refinement and processes of conversion, out of crude oil you can get fuel that, dry, that powers your car. You can get diesel that powers your generator or diesel engines. You can get even Vaseline that you rub on your body to shine, isn't it? Some of you went to body house and you know what they call rub and shine. How many of you know what it is? That means you did it when you were... Amen. If you know it, you did it. That knowing is with experience. <laughs> eh? It's the Greek word, idol. That's the knowledge that you have experienced it. Amen. And if you lie that you don't know it and you know it, you lied. <laughs> say amen. amen I'm just enjoying myself the power of God is so strong here amen so we will need to understand how to convert these blessings so that it can be utilized on earth everything that God would give to you already exists in the realm of the spirit but they are coming into your life is going to be based on your understanding that they exist and your intelligence in knowing how to convert them in fact in knowing how to transport them first into the natural and converting them for your use for instance god knows that you need to drive a car a car is a physical object it's tangible all right but when god created you he didn't give you car he blessed you in that blessing was the provision of a car that car will come at a specific time but it will be based on your knowledge that there is something that was seeded into you when you were created that has the ability to attract physical things that you need into your life even a car and then knowing how to convert that thing into a car. For instance, it could be by the favor of God. If God wants you to have a car as much as you want to have a car, the spiritual component that will make for you receiving that car can be referred to as favor. So you get to a place and they are selling a car for 3.5 million. But because of the favor of God that is on you in form of a spiritual blessing. Do you see favor? Can you see it with your eye? But you can look at the life of a man and by certain indices you can judge that this man is walking in the favor of God. 
How can it be that what you don't see determines your reality? So when that favor of God begins to manifest, when you understand how to activate that favor, a car that should be sold to you for 3.5 can be sold for 1 million. The person will say, how much you get? Say, hmm, say, how much you get? He say, my brother, na 900,000. Say, ah, you know, say this car na 3.5. Okay, make a 1 million, come carry the car. Ah. And when you tell people that you bought a car of 3.5 million for 1 million, they will say, nah, this car is not good. It's called favor. It's a spiritual reality, but with intelligence, you were able to convert it to bring about physical things that you need. The Bible says that he has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Life and godliness. Godliness has to do with your serving God, your work with God, your relationship with God. So those things will be more or less spiritual things, like the anointing, like grace. But when he says life, it means that the things you will need to survive and to thrive on earth... God did not only give you invisible things like grace, like favor, like the anointing. He also gave you visible things, but they are existing in an intangible form. And the Bible calls it the supply of the Spirit. Let me give you two definitions before we pray. The supply of the Spirit, number one. What is the supply of the Spirit? Every spiritual resource both needed and supplied for the fulfillment of divine purpose. Every spiritual resource, both needed and supplied for the fulfillment of divine purpose and meeting the need of God's people. So let me read it in one sweep. The supply of the Spirit is number one. Every spiritual resource both needed and supplied for the fulfillment of divine purpose and meeting the need of God's people. Spiritual resources that you both need and that is supplied to you for the fulfillment of divine purpose. So maybe it is God's purpose that you will feed the poor. That's why he created you. You will be an extension of his love to humanity. So your life will be characterized with a lot of charity, a lot of giving. Now that divine purpose that is on your life is invisible. But it means, therefore, that it, you, you will be warranted, it will warrant that you are blessed physically. It will warrant that you have finances, financial resources, well enough for you to undertake those kinds of projects. So when we say the supply of the spirit, it is every spiritual resource that is both needed and supplied for the fulfillment of divine purpose. So how are you going to fulfill your divine purpose of feeding the poor if that is your purpose? Simple. God will bless you. That blessing can be favor. That blessing can be intelligence in the area of finance. And you will just discover that everything you touch prospers physically because of something invisible that is on your life. To the end that the physical benefit of that spiritual resource that is on you will be used to fulfill your purpose of feeding the poor. It's called the supply of the spirit. That's why I call them spiritual resources. They are resources, but they are spiritual. You don't see them, but they can be used both for your benefit as an individual and for your fulfillment of divine purpose. And you know, whether you like it or not, eh, there is no divine purpose on earth that can be fulfilled outside of available financial resources. Yes or yes? Even if God created you to come and die, at least when you die, the coffin, they'll buy it. They will not prophesy it. They'll buy it. Whatever that will be used to kill you, they will buy, use money to buy it. Is that true, brothers and sisters? You're not talking. Is it the heat? Is it true? 
There is no div- there is no divine purpose that can be fulfilled outside of su- sufficient financial empowerment. And we don't preach this because we are trying to raise greedy people. No. We preach it so that enlightenment can come to God's people. That now that you know that, okay, I need financial resources to fulfill what God has called me to do. The first thing is not to go about looking for it. The first thing is to be conscious of the fact that the blessing that is on you when you were created has the ability to attract or to give birth to these financial things that you will need that are tangible. So what you will now do is go to God and learn the intelligence by which you can convert what is on you so that you can have something on your hand. Thou anointed my head with oil, but it is my cup that will show the kind of anointing that I carry. That anointing is a spiritual resource. It's the supply of the spirit. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to do what? To preach good news to the poor. What is good news to the poor? John 3, 16. No. Good news to the poor is take. Don't suffer hunger again. Good news to the poor is what level are you? 200 level. Who pays your school fees? I struggle. From today till you graduate, I will pay it. That's good news to the poor. If after that statement you tell the person, wait for five hours, they'll wait there. Some of us have uncles that, you know, they are like the big boys in the family or aunties. And you know, when you are broke, you know how you need to go around them to go, not me. Me, I will never do that. Okay? I honor them, but me, beg? No. Say no. No, I will never. That's the only place I have pride to beg. No, I have pr- pride in that one. Amen? Whether you like it or not, say amen. 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 No, no, no. I can't beg. I know too much to beg. Amen. So you know you go around the uncle, you will go to you can even go early in the morning, sweep the house, join them to work. The uncle now come down and says, Ah, you are still around. I don't know. <laughs> How is school? Ah, oh, that's good. Okay, okay, go okay, relax. And you know the uncle, the uncle already knew that you came for money. So he will not rush. You know, big men they don't they don't rush. He will say, sleep over now, sleep tomorrow, you go back. Then you sleep till the next day. The next day he goes out very early. And then he calls you and says, hey, I have a very important meeting we'll see in the evening. Then you remain there. Mark time in the house. <laughs> Even when they call you school and say, they go write test tomorrow. When you now put it side by side, test of 15 marks. And there's no money in my account. No be person wait, they are alive. Now go write test. That's what some of you do. Is that true? Now, that is not the formula, but that's what some of you do. Don't, don't copy what I've said now. Say no food, no money. Not, not the person who they alive, not in the right test. <laughs> then the next day, your uncle now call you around 10 a.m. You were thinking he would call you early in the morning and say to you, go. Around 10 a.m. he will call you to his room. He's still lying down on the bed. Then he now say, how is school? Fine. What course are you studying? Ask you all kinds of questions. Then when they finish, they say, hey, open that drawer and take whatever is there and manage it. And that manage it, eh? that manage it is enough for a whole semester. You know, I like the way big men say thank you. A big man can say, hey, just, just take, there's an envelope there just for appreciation. When you go there, what is there literally will change your life. Eh? I went somewhere one time and the person said, ah, man of God, I'm so happy you came to my house. Then he brought a very flat envelope and he knelt down and gave me. I took it and put it in my bag. All the while I was, you know, there, I, I wish I could see what was in the envelope. My prophetic gift didn't work. <laughs> I wanted to know my faith. Is it 1,000 naira? When I opened it much later, I couldn't wait to. When I went home and opened it, I saw hundreds of dollars. I said, ah. He said, use this one to buy water. That one, they buy water. <laughs> that one, no go change wardrobe. You know, they say, use it to buy water. And that, that thing will buy two trucks. 
<laughs> That's your realm after tonight. Yeah. Hear me? God told Abraham, he said, I will bless you and make you great and make you a blessing. God is moving you from being blessed to becoming a blessing. If you believe it, let your amen be louder. The favor of God that will make you rich, that will make you great, so that others can count you as a destiny helper. May that favor rest upon your life after tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. Ten more minutes and we'll pray. Be seated. It's not just enough to be blessed. It's enough also to be a blessing. There is a joy that comes with it. When was the last time somebody knelt down before you and was crying? And say, if not for you. I know you say glory to God, but you know somewhere inside you say, ah. That's the kind of joy I want you to have. That men are not praying again because you are the answer to their prayer. The day you appeared, they stopped praying some prayers. That's how your life will be. Forget about what you are going through now. Why you are even going through what you are going through now is so that you will have compassion enough for the people that you will use to deliver from that thing in the, next, in the near future. If you've never tasted poverty enough, I'm using that as an example because we all relate with that. But the blessing of God transcends beyond finances. I hope you know. But I'm using it as an example because all of us relate with that. If you've ever tasted poverty before and then God blessed you, you now transited to the other side. When you see somebody in that state, you'll be moved to help because you know what they feel. You know what they are going through. And that's why God will bless some brothers here. Yeah. And because I've realized that now it's as if in this generation marriage is beyond is beyond you know settling down because you love the person and all of that. This is our generation now. They are adding money to love. So a young lady is looking at a guy as the ticket out of poverty. Yes or no? That's why they will be demanding from the guy what they can never demand from their father. Is that not true? You are not talking. You don't want me to preach. Someone say, Apostle, face your message. It's true now. You're, you, you're, you're, you have never, your father has never taken you to airport before, but you will tell the guy, book flight for me. Ah. Let me pray for the brothers. May God, may God make you a bailout system. The blessing that will make you a bailout system, your life will become a deliverer. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. Amen. That's why you must be blessed because now... Uh, the young lady is praying and hoping that you will be the ticket out of. Amen. Amen. And young lady, don't, young ladies, uh, please. Marriage is not about that, okay? Marriage is about purpose, divine purpose. Now back to my teaching. Let me give you the second definition. <laughs> what is the supply of the spirit? I said, number one, the supply of the Spirit is every spiritual resource, both needed and supplied for the fulfillment of divine purpose and meeting the need of God's people. Whether it is the anointing, power, angelic assistance, all these things are spiritual phenomena. They are the supply of the Spirit deployed in the life of a man to fulfill divine purpose and to meet his needs. Number two, the supply of the Spirit is the grace of God. The grace of God. Simple definition. The grace of God. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, 
that through his poverty you might become rich. The grace of God is the supply of the Spirit. John 1 16, of his fullness have we received grace for grace. So grace is God's economy. Grace is heaven's economy. Grace is the supply of heaven that can be deployed in the life of a man. Everything that you will need is supplied in grace. Everything that you need is supplied in grace. And it is by faith that you obtain that which is delivered to you by grace. So the grace of God is the supply of the Spirit. You know the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, that God is able to make all grace abound towards you. All grace, meaning that grace exists in levels, in dimensions. So there is grace for prosperity. That spiritual reality, when it settles on an individual, it will naturally translate that person from poverty into prosperity on different levels. I hope you know, prosperity exists in different levels. There is also grace for wisdom. The ability to apply right solutions that can distinguish your life on earth. There is grace for intelligence. When it comes upon you, you can retain so much more than an average human being. In fact, the Bible says that when the Spirit of God comes, He will bring to your remembrance all that you have been taught. When that grace rests on your life, you can't forget things easily. Everything that we need to enjoy life on earth and to fulfill divine purpose is captured in the grace of God. So if at any time you are deficient of anything in your life, what you should look for is not that thing. What you should look for is the grace that produces that thing. For instance, if your prayer life is always deformed, if your prayer life is always up today, down tomorrow, do you know that there is a grace that can keep you always on fire for God? That can keep you operating on a level? Who told you that you must be weak and beggarly? Instead of crying and then complaining, why don't you ask God to obtain that grace? There are people like yourself. The Bible says Elijah was a man of like passions as we are. But the kind of prayer he prayed, very many people cannot pray. Why? Because there is a grace needed to operate or to function on that level. To minister, there is a grace for it. That you stand before people. There are some people that once they look at two people in front of them, they forget, their brain becomes blank. And then talk about hundreds of people like this. And perhaps online. You know, recently we were preparing for one of the, you know, one of the sessions of the midnight prayer. And we're just joking and you know i just realized how that it's not easy to stand before a camera and speak to an invisible audience if you think you are bold enough let them put a camera in front of you and your, your your tongue will cleave to the roof then talk more of speaking to the camera then talk more of praying then prophesying then ah there is a grace for you to there is a grace that can cause men to gather to hear you. Yes. There is a grace that can send your voice beyond your territory. Everything that we need to enjoy life on earth and to fulfill divine purpose is captured in the grace of God. But you need to have the understanding of how to obtain that grace and through that grace produce that which you want to see in your life so one of the supply of the spirit that we will enjoy tonight is the anointing every one of us gathered here have needs have issues in our life we have different things that we want god to meet as our faces are different so our needs are different all that god will need to do is supply the anointing upon his servant and then by the release of the anointing a singular release on his life will manifest in different ways in the life of people. Some will be healed. Some will be delivered. Some will, will have miracles manifest in their life. Some will experience signs and wonders. Some will have their loved ones touched at home 
whilst they are here different kinds of manifestations all coming from one raw material the anointing so you see my job in every miracle service is simply to become the processing point the conversion point between heaven and you that the supply of the spirit on me then through the intelligence of god's word and my relationship with the holy spirit i know how to dissipate or i know how to 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 to, to give to each and every one according as their needs are that's what happens the supply of the spirit one time jesus was in a crusade and the bible says, says that people sought to touch him because virtue flowed out of him the spirit of god upon him was so strong at that point that they couldn't see what was on him but they could literally touch it there was power activated it created something in the natural that was affecting and influencing the people around him remember the story of elisha and the axe head while they were cutting with the axe the head fell and went into the river and when he cried out to elisha the bible says elisha caught a stick now the axe head was made of metal it was meant to sink by default it is heavier in mass and weight than a stick but elisha caught the stick threw it where the axe head fell and then there was something happened natural laws were suspended and then the axe head floated while the wood that should float sank it's called the supply of the spirit the anointing on elisha elisha understood how to convert it to produce that miracle jesus knew how to convert the anointing on his life to turn water to wine but i don't know whether he turned water to wine or he made them taste it as wine while it was still water whichever be the case every time the supernatural overrides the natural what you experienced was the supply of the spirit so if there is lack of the supply of the spirit there will be difficulty in experiencing the supernatural the prophet said micah chapter 3 verse 8 he said behold i am full of power as of the spirit of god do you see the power no he said but i can feel it i know i am full of it and because of that he said i can declare to jacob his transgression and to israel his sin it's not easy to preach to people who are evil and who are into evil practices and tell them to repent and they keep quiet and they're looking at you they may just get your head off like john the baptist but because of the spiritual resource that was in micah in form of power he could boldly stand and look at a generation and point them back to god it's called the supply of the spirit tonight god is going to supply to us his spirit and it will be converted according to the need in your life or according to god's purpose that should be fulfilled in your life some of you you have a destiny that makes you a a a, a semi-conversion point instead of god to answer one thousand people he will just bless you because you will now become the answer to one thousand people if 14 people in your local government are looking for scholarship secondary and tertiary institutions all of that is going to be sorted by money all that god will do is just place a grace for prosperity on one man and the man goes to the village and say god i have all the people that that need scholarship gather them you are going to school they gather you which school or you are from ss1 to ss3 you and then he becomes an answer to the prayers of people meanwhile there are other people that god needs to attend to them so sometimes sometimes it may either be by the level of understanding that we have accumulated or it may be by the kind of request we place before god for instance god somebody now now we are going to pray for prayer requests and somebody will write on this prayer request number one financial breakthrough number two healing for my mother number three what else again give my brother a job number four 
Huh? Help my sister to prosper in her business. Number five, miracle alert. Let me tell you, eh? In that list, if I was God, the only relevant request is number one. Number one solves the other ones. Ah. See, when there's money, there are some things you don't need to, there are some sickness you don't pray for. Money can solve it. If they say we need a kidney transplant and your mother will be fine. How much? Seven million. And you have not seen one million before. That's when you start praying for God to do miracles, isn't it? But for someone else who is a multi-millionaire, your case is already settled. Take the seven million, take her in for the surgery, give her her life back. You know, when they put in that kidney, they've given her her life back. So sometimes the weight of your request determines the supply of the spirit on your life. That's why you see that you come for a miracle service and perhaps you wrote down five prayer requests and you go and after a week, God only answers two. Simply, God is telling you the ans- those two are the answer to the others. As you, 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 are, you want me to bless your sister in her business. Is it not 1.5 million she needs to be established? If I put that grace on your life, have I not solved that one? So the supply of the Spirit will come to us based on our need. And that is why Jesus encouraged us in John chapter 14, 16, I believe, rather, verse 24. He says, Before now you have not asked, ask and receive, that your joy may be full. The reason why God is telling you to ask today is because there is abundance of grace to meet you at the point of your expectation. I believe that after tonight, everyone here will go back with a testimony. Everyone will go back with a new song. You didn't leave your house or you are not following online just to be seated here and allow God to waste your time. No, he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So in your heart, everything that you have edited that you think God may not be able to meet this one, I'd like you to put it back on that list. Because when there is the supply of the Spirit, everything is possible. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches where? In glory. Can you see glory? No. But glory is worthy enough to produce everything that you call a need around you. Are you ready for God tonight? In your seated position, I'd like you to talk to God in one minute. And in just this one minute, ask him for whatever it is that you want him to do for you. Make sure you are talking to him. Present your burden before him. Tell him, God, you know that I've exhausted myself. I've come to the end of myself. I've done everything I can, but this challenge still remains. Can you come true for me? Is there such a thing as the supply of your spirit that can turn out for my deliverance? Is it possible that I can be free from this captivity? Is it possible that this aspect of my life can change? Yes, it can. Because of the supply of his spirit. Talk to him in a minute. There is a seal anointing in the sanctuary there is the sweet in the atmosphere oh come lay down all the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary There is a sweet, talk to him, anointing in the sanctuary. Go ahead and speak to him. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down the burdens you have come. Oh, come lay down the burdens you 
of Calvary, for in the sanctuary. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Oh Lord, do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Oh, hear me. I like you never to entertain doubt tonight. There is nothing that is too hard for God to do. Absolutely nothing. It may be impossible with men, but not with God. It may even be impossible with the vessel, but not with God. Once you bring God into the equation, all things are possible. A while ago, I had the privilege of praying with a, a senior officer in the military. I shared this testimony and will pray. As at that time, he was a brigadier general. I didn't know that there's a lot of politics that go on to be promoted from brigadier general to major general. In fact, to be promoted to general. I didn't know that it's not, a, not all about passing exams. It's about who likes you or who doesn't like you. Or who is your godfather or who is not your godfather. Now, remember that evening I got a call from this gentleman. Sir so, Apostle, this is the condition. I've sat for this exam. I've tried two times and I failed. This third time is the last attempt. And this third time, all the odds were already stuck against him. It was obvious that he was going to fail. Because somebody seated amongst the board that will promote him didn't like him. May God deliver you from wicked people. And then I prayed with him. I told him this time, when your name comes up before the board, I said it prophetically. I didn't know there was even a board. I told him, I said, when your name comes up before the board, you will be promoted. And he said, Amen. Two weeks later, as God will have it, promotion list came out. And his name was among those promoted from Brigadier General to Major General. Recently, I met with him in March. All that, all that time we've not met, it was on phone. I met with him in March. And then he began to explain everything that happened. Thank God I didn't hear that explanation before praying for him. If I'd had that explanation, I would not even be able to pray. That passing the exam was not the issue. There were three people that sat at that board that would promote people. And then there was this senior officer who he had an issue with. He didn't even know it was an issue. They used to be close with the officer. He didn't know it was an issue. And the officer took it personal for years. And even while he was here in Meiduguri, you know, the officer was at the headquarters. Anything that is connected to him, the officer will fight it. He will block it. They will call him from there and say, what do you do, Oga? And then when he heard that among the people in the board, that will sit on this promotion. This officer was involved. He gave up. He said, ah. But after that prophetic word, God divided the board into two. The most senior officer there said, we must promote this man. Then the other one joined him and said, yes, this guy is long overdue for promotion. Two against one. Do you believe God will move in your situation tonight? I told you it only takes a spoken word nothing else he spoke and the world was made the bible says he spoke and they stood fast when god has spoken over your life there is nothing else he needs to do all you need to do is hold on to what god has said and then watch by the supply of the spirit the manifestation of that which god has declared i'd like you to rise on your feet we are going to pray tonight
Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Wave your hands and give him praise. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's holy ground. A higher place than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's holy ground. A higher place than where I am. Lord, plant my feet on higher. A higher place than where I am. Lord, plant my feet on Raya. When peace like a river, it is well with my soul. Prophesy to yourself, it is well, it is well. When I am down, and oh my soul, so weary. When trouble comes, and my heart burning is ready you can I think we can start submitting right now if they are not ready I'll give you the next three minutes to write down your prayer requests and submit them as the ushers go around with the baskets God is about to do mighty things tonight you raise me up Please write your prayer request quickly if you've not written it and submit it. You raise me up to more than I can be. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Mighty one, reign in my Jehovah is 
to write if you need to write your request so that we can pray. wait first. Why didn't we buy another? How much is it? Do they sell it in the market? Huh? Do they sell a snare drum now in the market? They don't sell it there. Otherwise, we would have answered that prayer. There's no need to pray for that. So because of that, tomorrow we have to buy another snare drum so you have a spare. Alright? Alright? We are playing, but something is not right. And I, I, I was suspecting something is wrong there. Amen. Are you ready tonight? this place thank you for miracles tonight thank you for signs and wonders thank you for mighty things that you will do just play soft now Just play soft now. Let's be sensitive. The anointing is here now. God is asking me to pray for healing first. But there's a sign God is giving me. Everybody please lift your hands. There's a lady whom the power of God will come on. And 
it will be with a loud shout a very loud shout in the congregation once that happens i'll begin to pray for the sick that's a sign god is giving me and then we'll begin to pray if you are sick get ready to be healed the anointing of the, of the spirit of god is present tonight please lift your hands just follow instructions lift your hands every kind of disease will go tonight terminal conditions diseases that are hereditary in nature all kinds of health conditions will be solved tonight please just lift your hands the power of God will come on a young lady and she will scream very loud that everybody will hear that's it that's the sign that's the sign I want to pray but God is showing me something I see four people that the spirit of prophecy is coming on now help them help them help them I'm saying I saw it like fire falling on people this is not part of you but I just saw it now by the spirit please help them hallelujah now put your right hand where the sickness is where the pain the health condition is put your right hand there we are going to pray for the sick now if it's in the dedicate part of your body or it's a blood issue put your right hand on your chest there's somebody with sugar diabetes that god is healing right now as i'm talking now sugar diabetes you are here god is healing you now yes i see god purifying your blood that's what i'm seeing sugar diabetes is being healed now just follow me okay just stay on the background sugar diabetes i just saw i saw god purifying somebody's blood now thank you father please put your right hand if you are sick wherever the condition is we are going to pray there's a young lady with abdominal cramps on your lower abdomen you are feeling it now but i'm going to count five and after the count of five it will disappear like you never felt it before one two three four five is gone it's gone it's gone if you are standing in for somebody who is not here please um raise your phone as a point of contact and let's pray for them if you can call them call them if you have somebody in the hospital call them right now put the phone running we are going to pray god showed me that he was going to do massive healings tonight i want you to believe it we don't have so much time so i want you to act very fast when you are there when you are here 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 can we pray now can we pray are you ready i'd like you to watch what god will do here tonight when i say in the name of jesus i'd like you to scream amen at the top of your voice in jesus name we pray hmm. just wait there are two people that i see demons leaving them now demons coming out of them you are going to shout that amen again in jesus name we pray stop stop i saw demons living help them help them help them please please be sensitive okay so that people don't injure themselves i saw demons just living now it's we, we are praying for healing but god is doing deliverance we are going to shout that shout again in jesus name we pray Father, I take authority against affliction. 
I take authority against disease. I take authority against every health condition. Every devil of infirmity. At the count of three, I command you to let them go now. One, two, three. Go in the name of Jesus. 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 Every terminal condition, every terminal disease, every disease that is hereditary, it was in your mother, it was in your grandmother, it's in the family. Every devil of ancestral disease, by the power of him that raised Christ from the dead, I command you in the name of Jesus, let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet by the power of the Holy Ghost be healed be healed be healed be healed in your bones be healed in your tissues be healed in your muscles Baratokoski Palahada I see somebody having an unusual condition with your muscles especially around your joints it's like they are becoming stiff and you are afraid that this may lead to paralysis some part of your muscles all of a sudden become stiff once and again but in the name of jesus god is healing you now i speak life to that condition now in the name of jesus christ every kind of headache be healed now in the name of jesus christ some of you, ever since we stepped into this heat season, you began to accumulate all kinds of health conditions. Now I speak to your body. Be healed permanently. I speak to your body. Be made whole now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Eye conditions be healed. Long-sightedness, short-sightedness, astigmatism, color blindness every kind of eye condition be healed now in the name of jesus hearing conditions be healed now let your ears be open now in the name of jesus christ every hearing condition is healed now and every issue with your ear god is setting you free now there's somebody sometimes unusual liquid comes out of your ear unusually liquid a kind of liquid comes out i command it to dry up now in the name of jesus christ any form of goiter be healed right now i said be healed now in the name of jesus christ every unwanted growth around your neck region disappears now in the name of jesus christ asthma be healed now respiratory conditions be healed now in the name of jesus i speak to your liver i speak to your kidney i speak to your spleen i speak to all your organs in your abdominal region i declare them healed now in the name of jesus christ there's somebody with heart palpitation like you feel unusual heartbeat in fact even when the drummer was playing at some point you felt your heart beating like the bass drum i'm seeing you right now you are like um between dark or chocolate in complexion right now the peace of god is coming on your heart check yourself it has gone forever in the name of jesus christ every skeletal condition be healed now let bones come to its bone now in the name of jesus christ every unwanted growth in your body disappears now it disappears now i say it disappears now in the name of jesus christ i'm still praying keep your hands where the condition is 
unusual stomach upset stomach upset abdominal distension i command you be healed now i command you to be healed now also be healed now in the name of jesus christ there's somebody with pile pile in fact it's like you have, you you felt it when you came into the service but right now it is disappearing never to return i said it's disappearing never to return i say unto you be healed now in the name of jesus christ every kind of disease condition that i may not have mentioned i declare from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet be healed i said be healed in the name of jesus christ be healed in your bloodstreams be healed in your bones be healed in your tissues every part of your body i speak life to them in jesus mighty name we pray i like you to shout that amen on the top of your voice hallelujah miracles are happening already miracles are happening already there's somebody just while you are standing now just now you felt like something came out of your body you felt like something came out of your body come quickly i want to get that testimony come quickly you felt something just left you while you are standing just now the rest of us check yourself okay that's the sign that you had faith to be healed check yourself now some of you as you are checking yourself the conditions are leaving as you are checking the pain is going as you are checking all of a sudden there is relief coming check yourself and if you see that god has healed you or you see that there's an improvement in your condition i like you to rush to the front quickly don't wait don't wait back let's get your testimony we have enough time for that if you notice that the symptom has gone or you are feeling relief or god has healed you completely i like you to rush to the front and let's shame the devil in this place those of you that called somebody somewhere maybe a loved one or a friend call them back now find out how they are doing and bring us the news of what god has done let's do that as quick as we can let's do that as quick as we can he's alive amen he's alive jesus is alive forever he's alive oh he's alive he's alive jesus is alive you have been healed i'm already seeing the line here if this line is too much we will need to form another line somewhere by my right okay we are going to take these testimonies and after that we are going to pray and then i'll speak over our lives if you notice that the symptoms have gone the condition has been improved or you are healed completely please come the rest of us you can be seated Can we clap our hands already look at them the miracles already coming in i said clap your hands for jesus i said clap your hands for jesus 
Amen. God is healing people right now. People who are not here. If you have loved, one in the, loved ones in the hospital, God is healing them right now. I know it as I know my name. I can see people being healed. God is setting people free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any kind of affliction that is hereditary in nature is in the bloodline. As long as you are in that family, you will probably be a victim of it. Tonight has marked the end of that, 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 that disease. Tonight terminates that disease from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is healing hereditary conditions. Huh? Terminal conditions. Terminal conditions. I see a lot of diabetes, diabetes conditions being healed. Terminal diseases. Huh? Pains are disappearing right now. If you have noticed an improvement, please rush to the front quickly and so that we can share your testimony. Hallelujah. Tonight is someone's night for a visitation. I said tonight is someone's night for a visitation. In the name of Jesus. Please, can you pray in the spirit for a minute? I'm trying to pick something in the realm of the spirit now. Just pray in the spirit for one minute. So barada la bakate la ma, si kroto lo brokoto maya, je krete ke palagradesona. Jesus, yeah, you have done it again. Jesus, yeah, in a special way, what you made possible. Become possible, Jesus. Jesus yeah. Oh, you know the song better than I do. Let's sing it one more time. Jesus, yeah. Jesus yeah. you have done it again. You have done it again. Jesus, yeah. oh, you just mentioned what was impossible. You made possible. You made possible. That is somebody's testimony after tonight. Your amen tells me you are already tired. I said that is somebody's testimony after tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm not making empty declarations. Are you hearing me? By these declarations, I am forming and crystallizing what God wants to happen in your life. I said that will be somebody's song from tonight. If you've never had the cause to sing this kind of song after tonight, it will be the anthem on your lips. I said it will be the anthem of your lips. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have done it again. Jesus, yeah. In a special way. What was it? Oh, la la la, get ya son. Jesus, yeah. Sing it with me one more time. Jesus, yeah. You have done it again. Jesus, yeah. Oh, in a special way. What was it? What Let's sing it one more time and let the devil know God is doing something new. Jesus, 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 in a special way. God was in now there's a lady that God just healed don't be ashamed 
um, don't be ashamed. You are light in complexion. You've had an infection. Huh? And because of this infection, something is coming, something, you know, there's a discharge that comes out once and again. You are light in complexion. God just healed you now. God just healed you now. Go to the restroom, check yourself, and we'll find a way to take that testimony. You know, maybe not to show the face of the person, but we'll find a way to get that testimony. You see, when, when I mention conditions by word of knowledge, I am interested in those testimonies more so that people can believe that God confirms his word. If I say it and then you don't get to hear the testimony, it's, it's easy to disbelieve it. But when I say it and then you find that it happened to somebody, it's a sign that God confirms his word and it creates an atmosphere for us to believe for the impossible. All right? God just healed you. God has set you free. You treat, you've been treating, but no way. In fact, you are even afraid. This, the way this infection was going, you are afraid that it will affect your capacity as a woman. But God has set you free. Go to the restroom and check. That discharge has been terminated. In the name of Jesus Christ. Clap your hands once again. Amen. Let's take the testimonies. After this, we are going to pray, okay? After this, we're going to stand up in the next 10 minutes and we're going to pray some dangerous prayer. Are you ready for that? Meanwhile, let's enjoy and witness the things that God has done in our midst. Clap again for Jesus. You clap as if you can perform one miracle. Amen. Let's hear the testimonies now, quickly. Yes, sir. Can we get another mic quickly to him? Okay, he's working now. He's working. Yes, sir. This is uh, Sister Charity Ibrahim. Please give us volume on that mic quickly. She was the person you called out by word of knowledge as, as we're declaring something left someone. Uh, please help him with the mic. Those of you at the sound, please help us. Yes, now. sir. This is Sister Charity Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. You called her through word of knowledge that something left someone as we're declaring. So yes. she's the one she rushed out. Can you clap and give Jesus praise? You felt something left you. Yes, sir. Please step forward, Mark. I want to pray for you. Are you married? Yes, but I'm no more in the marriage. It's all right. It's, let's, let's just stop there. I want to pray for you. Huh? I saw a shadow. Are you hearing me? I saw a shadow. That thing that left you. I saw the sh a shadow. Like a man. Yes. Left you. I want to pray for you. God has set you free. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Mm. God has set you free. Amen. This spirit is responsible for so many things yes, sir. in your life. Yes, sir. Even before you got married. Yes, sir. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I saw the shadow like a man. Yes, sir. Aha. Uh -huh. So even before you got married, there were some torments you were going through. Yes, sir. Are Very you hearing well. me? Do you have children? Yes, I have four. You have, have four daughters. You have four daughters. Yes, sir. I don't know, but I'm seeing that before, either before you started giving birth, or before you gave birth to one of them, there was some difficulty in conceiving, in conception. Yes, Are you sir. hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Which of them was that? The last one. The last one. There was. Yes, sir difficulty in conception yes sir. it nearly took my life yes because i saw like you even bled yes, like blood very well, coming out very well. good this spirit this spirit huh this is something from your foundation are you hearing what i'm saying this is a a demon from your foundations I'm talking about your father and mother's side now. I'm talking especially to your mother's side. Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. But God says tonight is your night of deliverance. Amen. You know what you do for me? Put one hand on your womb. Lift the other hand up. I want to pray for you. Lift the other hand up. Put one hand on your womb. 
leave the other hand remove the mic let me pray for her now father i stretch my hands in the name of jesus by the power of the blood i bring an end to this captivity let her be set free let her be set free Abdominal pain. Yes, sir. Sharp pain. Yes, sir. Good. So Since February. Yes, sir. And now. It has disappeared. Completely. Yes, sir. Let me use her to pray for any lady that experiences that. Whether it is as a result of the weather or it is a situation that you have that has befallen you. In the name of Jesus. Ladies, please can you put your hands on your womb? Your lower abdomen. I want to pray. My goodness. The power of God is going to come on a lady now whilst your hand is on, on your at your lower abdomen god is going to set you free i say devil that has enslaved your life right now holy ghost please help me god is going to set you free in the name of jesus christ now i rebuke every pain of such in the name of jesus i declare abdominal issues come to an end everything that god has not planted in your body be uprooted now be uprooted now be uprooted now in the name of jesus please keep your hands there i'm seeing i'm seeing the power of god coming on a lady and something is going to leave you now while your hand is at your lower abdomen i'm seeing the power of god setting you free like a spirit coming out so you feel something sharp coming out of you holy spirit please help me help me help me touch that person right now everything that god has not planted let it be uprooted let it be uprooted let it be uprooted let it be uprooted just keep your hands there and be still let it be uprooted 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 an end to that affliction has come in the name of jesus christ amen and amen celebrate jesus yes go ahead sir yes sir this is sister deborah bonke mm. she has been diagnosed of short-sightedness since february so at the cost of the declaration she removed her glass, glasses glasses yes i she used to know I, I i know you with that glass yes. yes she could see she could literally see from afar she can see from afar yes sir please put something on the screen so that she can read maybe a scripture or something so at least that distance is long enough put a scripture or something or just put something on the screen so she can read let's test it can you read what's on the screen yes sir read it please in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was with god. i want you to clap your hands and give jesus please jesus yeah, you have done it again jesus yeah, in a special what was impossible? You made possible. Jesus. Whose mom?
mother has a name called Abigail. Your mother is called Abigail. Abigail. I want to pray for her health. Your mother is called Abigail. Where are you? Where are you? Come quickly. Your mother is called Abigail. Clap for Jesus. Dark? She dark? No, she's light. Light. Okay, just hold on. I want to pray for your mother. No, just 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 a little bit down, okay? This is prophecy, so I need I need the place to be calm. Amen. Now you see what I'm doing is it's one anointing. Alright? Manifesting in different ways. Converting it for different things. I want to pray for your mother, Abigail. But when you came out, I saw a woman who is dark in complexion. Your mother has a sister yes, sir. who is dark in complexion yes, sir. and plumpy. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. I know I, I didn't make a mistake. <laughs> now, even some of you at that point, you say, hey, I don't miss her more. You can't be wrong in the spirit. Huh? Lift your hands. Father, we speak to Mrs. Abigail and to her sister. And that cycle of affliction that is in their generation, we break it now forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. Tell your mother that all the unnecessary ailments will stop. You see, this woman that I saw, that is her sister that is dark, she has a lot of health challenge. In fact, recently she's beginning to develop eye issues. Are you? She uses glass. Uh huh. It's an, uh, this is a cycle, a demonic cycle. You know, there's a difference between a pattern, a cycle, and a flow. It's not deliverance now. A pattern is transgenerational. A cycle is one generation. The generation of your mother, there is, uh, there's been a lot of attack of affliction. But God says he has brought an end to those afflictions. Amen. And he has added for them 20 more years each. Amen. You better shout amen if you are keen into that prophecy. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. You can return back rejoicing. I said clap your hands and give Jesus praise. If you don't clap, we will stop the service here. Hallelujah. No man on earth should give glory to Arotoko Paradise. All the glory must be to the Lord. No man on earth, no man on earth should give glory to Him. All the glory must be to the Lord. I'm hearing a name like Melafia. I don't know who is connected to Melafia. I'm hearing, you see, we can't do because of the constraint of time, we can't do healing, deliverance, the prophetic. So we'll just mix everything together. I hope you are not offended. Uh -huh. Melafia, who is who who is connected to that name? What I'm seeing is like you have somebody connected to you bearing that name. And this person is um, dark in complexion, if I'm seeing correctly. Say man. Melafia. Yes, sir. Huh? Her friend's dad. Is Your dark friend's in, dad. Is dark in complexion. Dark in complexion. Yes, What's his name? Melafia. Clap for Jesus. <laughs> and she was the next, was she the next person? What, okay, I thought she was. Okay, she was on the line. Okay. Your friend's dad. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Your friend should be grateful to God for bringing you here. God is fixing financial issues in his life. Do you know that your friend very well? Yes. Do you know the family very well? Yes. Good. So when I say I see God fixing financial issues, is that true? Our father is a king. Eh? Our father is what? A king. He's a king. Good. God is fixing financial issues. Are you hearing me? 
and this is what God is showing me God is showing me something that belongs to him that is being released are you hearing what I'm saying something that belongs to him that is being released I'm looking again in the spirit and I'm seeing you may not know this but I see God settling a land dispute that involves that man are you hearing what I'm saying yes, sir. so tell her that number one God is resolving financial issues number two God is settling a land dispute are you hearing me yes, and number three God is breaking the power of witchcraft in their ancestry in their lineage in the name of Jesus Christ we stretch hands towards you we use you as a point of contact to your friend and to the dad and we declare from today that God will visit that family and do to them as he has spoken everything that is being contended for will be resolved and everything that was taken or was lost will be restored in Jesus mighty name we pray amen, amen and amen clap for Jesus please go ahead sir yes sir Continue. this is sister Elizabeth Johanna yes last night she had a dream that somebody divide her head into two with a cutlass so ever since then she has been experiencing severe that headache. somebody divided your head into two yes that means you died in the dream now <laughs> and so from then severe headache, headache. In fact, she came here in here with a severe headache so at the cost of the declaration the headache disappears are you are you saying that are you saying that now look at this look at this a dream somebody macheted her and in the physical headache are you seeing how spiritual things correlate with the physical every attack that was launched against you in your dream i decree and declare it is terminated forever every attack that was launched against you in your dream i terminate it forever in the name of jesus Christ. and now no more headache Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. We declare that it is permanent in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. God bless you. Return back rejoicing. Celebrate Jesus. Yes, go ahead. Yes, sir. This is Jubilee David. 2018 October. Ah, what's the name? Jubilee. Okay. Jubilee David. Okay. 2018 October, Nidu broke in around her new region. Yes. So ever since then, she found it difficult to kneel or squat normally because of the excruciating pain. A needle broke into her leg. Yes, her knee, her around knee. the knee region. Wow. So and from then? She, she found it difficult to kneel or squat normally. Yes. So at the cost of the declaration, she received her healing. She could knee and also squat normally. Step forward, step forward. Try and kneel down, let's see. Any pain? Stand up. Please squat. Stand up again. Are you just looking? 2018. Five years of pain. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Was it an accident or a fight or what? I fell on it on the bed. Sir. You fell on the needle and yes. it broke into you. Yes, sir. Wow get operated on because you have to be operated no they did okay. not even do the operation so the thing is still here that's why i feel the pain when i smile oh the needle was still in your it's skin still here, jesus is lord and you are sitting down listening to this kind of testimony give the lord a big hand of praise so do you feel it you don't feel it again Not only has the pain left, but the needle disappears in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. Everything that appeared mysteriously in your life will disappear after tonight. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody here, I don't know if it um, has a name like I think this could be a cousin or a real, yeah, maybe a cousin or a sister or something. Or maybe you are the one. Somto Chuku. Is there a name like that? 
That's what I heard. Somtochuku. Is there anybody connected to that name? Yeah. Come quickly. Is it your name? Huh? Your your sister. Your sister is Somtochuku. Yes, sir. Fair in complexion. Wait. Who is Somto? My little niece. Your little niece yes, sir. is Somto Chuku. Yes, sir. She fair in complexion. Very fair, sir. Okay, and that's the person. Because I saw somebody very fair. You know, in the realm of the spirit, you can see many things at the same time. So you will need to know how to rearrange, okay? Can I pray for you? Come, come. I'm, I'm not. Uh, you want to go? Okay, you can go. I'm not finishing. No, stand there. Stand there. Who is? Uh, why are you standing at the back? Stay, stay there. Even you, I want to pray for you. Are you a student? No, sir. What are you doing? I'm a copper. You're a copper. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Listen. God says to tell you from today no more struggles. Amen. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. No more struggles. I don't know um, I don't know where you are right now but I see a job coming to you very soon. Amen. Are you hearing me? Have you done? Are you done with your service, or you are about to be through? Or how long do you have? I have three months left. You have three months left. Yes, God says, when you finish your youth service, He's going to provide a miracle job. Yes, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And God will so bless you in a short time, so that you can alleviate the sufferings of others around you. Amen. He says, he's saying Jesus Christ. That means it relates to Him. Is it true? Yes, sir. Because it's you that God will use as the bailout system. Yes, sir. Wait, oh. I'm seeing you walking on a laptop. I see, I see a laptop in front of you. Do you have a laptop like a system or something? I have one, but I didn't come with it. You, did, uh, you have a system? Yes. What do you do with a system? Because I saw, I saw you sitting down with a laptop in front of you. Are you doing anything, maybe a skill or something with it? Um, before I was learning um, how to do um, lightning design, electrical lightning designs. Okay. Looks, um, okay. But I haven't completed my training. Your training. Please go back and complete it. I see you do a lot of ICT things. That's what I'm seeing. Are you hearing me? Yes, God says he's going to give you a job after youth service. Amen. And he will use you as the bailout system for many people around you. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Who did you say this song to Chuku? My sister. Your sister? Yes. Hmm. Where is she? She's in Abuja right now. Can I say this to you? What is she married? No, sir. She's not married. Yes, sir. You know, I don't know. I just say what I see. But this is your sister. I see an unusual door opening for her. Amen. Hear me? To leave the country. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes. I see an unusual door opening for her to leave the country, to go overseas. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, Don't sir. think about how it will happen. You are not God. Yes, sir. As I'm speaking to you now, God is already orchestrating the helpers. The job that will come to you in three months' time has already been created. That's the power of prophecy. It's you now that will, will meet it in time. It's already there waiting for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You and that your sister. God has singled you guys out. He will bless you so well. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. And the two of you will help to raise the status of the family. Yes, sir. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And I will say one more thing. I don't know whether it's you or your sister, but one of you, I see somebody with... Um, like grief or you are not happy with 
some relatives one of you either you or your sister i see like an offense with some relatives are you hearing what i'm saying mm -hmm. so go back and talk to her it's either you or her god says to forgive them okay claire don't allow anybody to stay on your heart because god is about put to put his blessings on your life Amen. and i stretch my hands towards you in the name of jesus i declare that from today your story has changed in jesus name we pray go back to your seat rejoicing i say clap for jesus once more you said your knees yes, sir. good father we speak preservation from death in the name of jesus christ we declare that she will live and not die Amen. in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. return back rejoicing celebrate jesus yes sir let's hear the testimony yes sir we still have some people there okay let me allow them to give okay. the testimonies now go ahead this is sister tabita james mm -hmm. she came in with a sharp pain around the jaw region mm. so as soon as you start praying for the sick she put her hand there and all of a sudden, the pain disappeared, sir. Completely? Yes, sir. No more pain? Yes, sir. What part of your body? This part. Your jaw? Yeah. Is it a dental condition? No, just, just a pain around here. That I, can, I find it difficult to swallow even saliva. And now you can swallow? Yes, sir. Clap for Jesus. <laughs> Let me pray for you. Not only will it go and never return, but God perfect your entire body. God bring perfection to your health completely. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Celebrate Jesus. Yes ma, let me hear you. Okay, go ahead sir. Yes sir, this is Sister Deborah Wilson. She stood in for her mom who was suffering from uh, pectic ulcer disease and yes. also leg pain. Uh -huh. So as soon as you made the declaration, she went out and confirmed that her mother she's healed. healed yes sir. can we clap for jesus it is perfected in jesus name celebrate jesus once more yes let me hear you now this is tonya godwin what is wrong with the mic please help us sound people amen are you ready to pray yes I said, are you ready to pray? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. Yes, sir. This is Tonya Godwin. Mm -hmm. She said she has sad pain. She has had side pain yes. since last year. But while you were ministering, she checked and she couldn't feel the side pain. Side pain? Yes. By her ribs. By your ribs. Since last year. And it's gone. Give Jesus praise. Amen. It will never return in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, quickly, the next. Yes, this is Takubili. She said she has had cramps when she was coming to church. Just as you mentioned. Uh -huh. Abdominal and it, cramps. Yes, and it started today. And she has never had it before. Wow. Yes, but while you were ministering, the pain disappeared. It is completely gone. And also a pain on her shoulder disappeared. Too. Which shoulder? Your left shoulder? Left. Yes, sir. Move it, let's see. Lift your hand up. No more pain. Give Jesus praise. Yes, sir. This is Sister Magdalene Ruben. She's had back pain throughout the week and she could not do so much during the service, but um, and she has had it since 18, she was 18 years old. Back pain? Yes. Since 18 years old? Yes. So probably this is like maybe up to 10 years or more. That she was supposed to go for an x-ray. You were supposed to go for an x-ray? Yes, sir. Because of that condition? Yes, sir. And now? I, I cannot even feel anything. No pain again? Yes, sir. Please, can you run from that place? to this point and run back let's see she said she couldn't do anything all through the service now you better clap because you know god has done it hallelujah listen i don't want you to trivialize any miracle no especially in this condition where you she's supposed to go for x-ray and probably they will tell her something is wrong with her spine or something or i don't know whatever it is but in the name of Jesus Christ, your health is perfected. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Yes, let's hear the remaining ones yes. and then move Sister on. Sister Miracle NS, she says she has had pain from her lower abdomen to her legs. Even during wow. the service, she wow. came with the pain. Wow. 
And also, she you talked about heart palpitation. Yes. Yes, she said her heart was beating okay. during the service. But while you were ministering, she noticed that the pain had left. Healed permanently, never to return in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. Yes. Yes, sir. As God is healing their bodies, is fixing every issue in your life. Every issue that needs to be addressed, God is fixing it right now. Shout a loud amen. amen. Yes. yes. This is blessing Gabriel. She said a power bank fell on her leg during okay. the week, I guess. Yes. But then, and then she could not step on that feet very well. But while you were ministering, the pain, she noticed that she could bend the toe. Which feet is that? Let's see. Huh? The right. The right. And yes, you're even wearing a high heel. Yes, sir. And now no pain again. Yes, sir. A power bank fell. Can you clap for Jesus? <laughs> Amen. Now let me use her to pray for anybody with a muscle or a bone condition. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare an end to that condition. Let bones come to their bones. Let joints be straightened. Let muscles be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. There's somebody with a swelling on a part of your body. Check it. It just got down now. There's a swelling on a part of your body. The swelling just went down now. Check it and let's get your testimony. Can we clap and give Jesus praise? Please rise on your feet so we take some time to pray before we are done tonight. Where, is the, where are the prayer requests? Bring it, please. I'd like you to stretch your hands towards this request. We are going to take some time to pray on it. This request represents every need every expectation everything that god must address in our lives if god answers this request you are as good as entering into your rest please stretch your hands towards this request and i want you to pray and say oh god arise and answer your children lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus pneumatic please pray i like you to pray don't wait to be motivated to pray don't wait to allow anybody shake you to pray it is by your prayers that the supply of the spirit is released open your mouth and cry to god to arise over families over health conditions over careers over individuals over businesses i like you to ask the lord to arise Cry to him, Marata Kabasi Koto Borosiata, Ele Borosi Kabara de Ketela, Isapa la Kataba la Karegete, Eso Proto Kopasa la Kabara de Seke Parata Katebato Solo Borokoto, Sheleke Parakata la Daba, Leke Parada Kabasia Kata. Go ahead and pray, go ahead and pray, go ahead and pray. Shabata karate barata kate Shabata kata barata kata barata ke basuta Rusa Ila barakata bagesi barakata baliaka Eke barata kasi ka barakata Shabarakata ba Visit families, oh God Visit businesses, oh God Let dead things be brought back to life Visit relationships Meet them at the point of their need, at the point of their expectation. Let God arise. 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 That the Egyptians that you see today, you shall see them no more. Lift your voice and cry. Lift your voice and cry. Shut up, 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 shut up
Shekere barata la gala gala, eke barata ta kapa la gala de. Iko proto soto proto kopo soto no proto. Eke barata open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Sheka barata kata kasiaga, leke barata la kesiaga. Change my story, O God. Change my story, O God. Change my story, O God. Turn my captivity, turn my captivity, turn my captivity, like the spirit of the south. Akala kabra deke poso proto ya, ekabra kabala kabra deke poso proto ya, deke 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 bala kaja kaja sa. Seko para kada deke de koro sotonya. Esha kaka 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 kaka. Ebra koska bela kama huta. Esha kaka kaka para kada ya kaya. Seke para kada 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 bas. Eke koro koko sotoro koko dos. Esha kaka 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 kaka. Ebra kaka eka para kada 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 kada. Let answers be released. In Jesus' name we pray. I'd like you to stretch your hands with, with, you know, to this altar and let's agree for a minute. The Bible declares in Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24 that it shall come to pass that before they call I shall answer and while they yet speak it I shall hear them. Stretch your hands towards this request because this is the last time there will be a need in your life. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you look upon this request. As you know the heart of everyone here present, I ask that this request be converted to testimonies. We convert this request to answers now. We ask for a deployment of angelic assistance. We ask for a supply of the Spirit. Bring deliverance upon families. Bring deliverance upon individuals. Change the story of your children. Bring an end to financial captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ. For every loss, let there be recovery. For every loss, let there be restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare by the power of prophecy that the Egyptians that you see today in form of this request, you shall see them no more forever. I say you shall see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God arise for you in this season. I'm praying this for somebody. Perhaps you have been submitting prayer requests again and again. This will be the last that you will submit. God is giving you a new song on your lips after tonight. God is giving you a new song on your lips after tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we declare so shall it be. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for like 10-15 minutes and then I will speak over your lives and we are done tonight. Prayer number one, we are going to pray for the, the, the favor of God to rest upon us. Listen, the next 10 minutes are going to be destiny defining. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Remember where we read in Philippians 1.19. It said the supply of the spirit will come by your prayers. By your prayers. He that who have you not asked, John 16, 24. He say, ask and receive that your joy may be full. Are you ready to call on God this evening? In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray two prayers for favor. Number one, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 3. Sorry, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 3 to 4. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 3 to 4. 
everyone that is carrying the provision that your destiny needs at this time of your life God will cause you to meet with them by divine appointments are you ready to pray he said then you shall go on forward then you shall go on forward from there and come to the terebin tree of Tabor and three, three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you one carrying three young goods another carrying three loaves of bread take note of the provisions one carrying three young goods another carrying three loaves of bread obviously when one person is carrying three goods it means that he was blessed beyond himself do you understand that one person cannot eat three goods at once so there are people that god blesses so that they can carry extra because of the destinies of others you didn't get what i said that there are those that carry the provision that your destiny need at this time of your life let's finish the reading he said you will find one carrying three young goats another carrying three loaves of bread and another carrying a skin of wine verse 4 and they will greet you and give you the two loaves of bread which you shall receive from their hands you are going to pray oh god anyone carrying the provision that my destiny needs may i meet with them by divine appointments open your mouth and pray in the name of jesus listen don't don't wait for anybody to pray for you lift your voice and cry to god anyone carrying the provision that my destiny needs in this season of my life cause that i will meet with them by divine appointments in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray everyone carrying the provision of my destiny the provision that my destiny requires in this season by divine appointment cause that I will meet with them cause me to meet with them by divine appointment by divine appointment when you are there when you are there when you are there when you are there shaka para gade ke posia e koporo koposo koporo e ke pata la kasia e ka pata la shaka e koporo e koposo koporo koporo e ke posia e shaka para gade ke Everyone Open your mouth and cry by the favor of God, by divine appointment. I meet with them in this season. I meet with them in this season. In Jesus' name we pray. Prayer number two, Genesis chapter 41. These are prayers of favor that will provoke your destiny help as your way. Are you ready to pray tonight? You, this next prayer is that God will cause you to meet 
with those people that will connect you to greatness do you believe that some of you are skillful some of you are intelligent extremely intelligent you know that you are intelligent some of you have all the cv that you need but you need one person that will recommend you to somebody one person that will speak for you one person that will announce you to a place or to a people that that need what you carry are you ready to pray tonight it's the favor of god that will warrant that you meet with those people are you hearing me genesis 41 verse 9 to 14. genesis 41 verse 9 to 14. then the chief butler spoke to pharaoh and said i remember my faults this day he said when pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard both me and the chief baker we each had a dream in one night he and i each of us dreamt according to the interpretation of his own dream now there was a young hebrew man with us there a servant of the captain of the guard and we told him and he interpreted our dreams for us to each man he interpreted according to his own dream go on and it came to pass just as he interpreted for us so it happened he restored me to my office and he hanged him verse 14 that's where the emphasis is then pharaoh sent and called joseph whoever is a joseph here today may your pharaoh send for you please receive it by prophecy whoever is a joseph here that is in need of divine announcement may your pharaoh send for you this season in the name of jesus christ go back to verse 14 let's finish and pray he said then pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon and he shaved and changed his clothing and came to pharaoh you are going to pray oh god any man that will connect me to greatness anyone that will connect me to those that need what i carry by the favor of God, I locate them in this season. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and cry to God. By the favor of God. By the favor of God. By divine appointment. May they locate me in this season. May I be located by them in this season. Every man that will connect me to greatness. Every man starting with the responsibility of connecting me to greatness. Every man to whom I will be connected to greatness in this season of my life, may they locate me by the power of prophecy. May they locate me by the power of prophecy. May they locate me by the power of prophecy. In Jesus' name we pray. Forget about the sound, we are still going to pray. If you can hear me, shout Amen. amen. If you can hear me, shout a believing Amen. 
Say after me every bloodline pattern. I think it's just the monitors that are working. Maybe we need to fix the speakers. Every bloodline pattern. Mistake. Or deliberate action. That is standing as a hindrance. To my destiny. By the power of the blood of Jesus. I break free from it. I break free from it. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Shaka para de kete balagada regedes. Leke bera kapata beza kaprata kete kabaza. Zakrata baragada ke soproto koto. Zete prekete prakata lagade kaprada. Rekete ke bezo koto brogodo. Ikla prata kata ke zabrakata. Ila prakata kaze kete brogodos. Bloodline patterns. Mistakes. Deliberate actions. Committed by your ancestors committed by your predecessors that the devil is using that the accuser of the brethren is using against you by the power of the blood of jesus the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of abel the blood that silences the accuser i break free i break free by the power of the blood by the power of the blood i break free in Jesus name we pray say after me every affliction that is in my bloodline that is in my ancestry I cancel you by the blood of Jesus the Bible says in Deuteronomy 33 in verse 6 Moses was speaking he was blessing the sons of Israel. He said, let Reuben live and not die. That means there was a curse on that tribe. There was a curse that made men not to reach their climax as far as age is concerned. But someone had to make a pronouncement. He said, let Reuben live and not die. The psalmist says, I shall not die but live. There are afflictions that are bloodline based. There are sicknesses that are terminal diseases that are in the blood. Your grandfather had it. Your auntie had it. Your uncle had it. Now it's affecting your father. And you are beginning to see the signs in your body. Are you ready to cancel those afflictions? And hear me, when I talk about afflictions, it's not just sickness alone. Poverty can be an affliction. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say after me, every bloodline affliction in my life by the power of the blood of Jesus be cancelled be cancelled be rolled away open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus Bloodline afflictions, bloodline attacks, standing as a hedron over my life, over my destiny, be cancelled by the blood of Jesus, 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 by the blood of Jesus. Jesus. mighty name we pray shout a believing amen. amen Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20 to 21 we are still praying we are going to deal with ancestral covenants you have to believe that these things are real believe me I've done a lot of teachings on deliverance we've examined the scripture these things are real but that's why you are here so that God will put an end to it he said now may the God of peace 
who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. What will he do? Next verse. Make you complete. Do you have verse 21 in King James translation? Verse 21 in King James translation. He said, make you perfect. The blood of the everlasting covenant. That the reason why Jesus died was to enact a covenant with his blood. And on the strength of that covenant, everything about your life will experience perfection. Yes. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every, ancestral covenant Every ancestral covenant that was made with or without my notice by the blood of the everlasting covenant by the blood of the everlasting covenant be deleted from my life be deleted from my life in the name of jesus in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray Every ancestral covenant in your father's side and your mother's side by the blood of the everlasting covenant let it be rolled away let it be deleted 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 by the blood of the everlasting covenant in Jesus name we pray finally we are going to pray and confront witchcraft witchcraft orchestrations listen to me please whether you believe it or not there are people in this world that don't like you and it's not because of anything you have done they just don't like you when I talk about witchcraft in this context I'm not only talking about those who use diabolical power hatred anybody that is incensed by hatred or jealousy to manipulate the lives of others in any way whether physically or spiritually that is witchcraft when you read galatians chapter 5 verse 19 the bible mentions witchcraft as one of the works of the flesh the manifestations of the flesh it's not about what you have done there are just people that may not like you or may not like your father some don't like your father's name so anybody carrying their name, they are, they are at war with them. Some of you come from villages where they have families are at war against one another. You hear that somebody died in this family and three months later another person died. Meanwhile, it's the compound next door. Are you ready to pray tonight? If for nothing, your prayers will settle some things today. 2 Timothy 4 verse 18 one powerful scripture that we will, we will thunder in prayer over i believe in prayer or oh, believe me you are not wasting time i'm going to speak over your lives and we are done in the next 10 minutes but i want us to drive this prayer into our foundations certain things must fall once and for all second timothy 4 18 you can say a better amen to that he say and the lord will deliver me from every evil how many work every evil work the lord will deliver me from every evil work jesus taught them to pray and at the end of the prayer he said deliver us from evil are you ready to pray 
every every orchestration of witchcraft around my life around my family that is silently responsible for my pain silently responsible for my at for my calamity i declare deliverance by the power of the holy ghost lift your voice and pray let God arise and bring deliverance. Let God arise and bring deliverance. Let God arise and bring deliverance. And the Lord shall deliver you from every evil work, from every evil work. Every form of evil launched against you, launched against your life, every attack from hell launched against your family. A canaba socorro potoma, a precate coposo to brocoto, a in Jesus name. Psalms 34, final prayer and I will speak over our lives. Psalms 34, two verses, verse 4 and verse 26. Verse 4 and verse 26. Sorry, Psalms 35, 35, 35, verse 4. And verse 26. Don't worry, we are going to close by 7:30. Let those be put to shame and brought to dishonor. Who do what? Who seek after my life? I thought you would shout a better amen to that. It's showing you that anyone that seeks after your life in any way, go put the scripture. This is the allotment of anyone that is after you for whatever reason he said they will be brought to shame and dishonor we are still reading he said let those be turned back and brought to confusion who plot my heart that as they are plotting evil against you they will land in confusion huh? you remember what happened the story of lot and the two angels when the men of sodom came and were trying to wrestle lot to lay hold of the angels the Bible says that the angels struck them with blindness. They were in front of the door. All of a sudden, the door became too far. The Bible says they began to weary themselves looking for the door. It was confusion that God planted in their I pray for you in this month of April. Anyone that is plotting evil, any human agent partnering with the realm of the spirit to plot evil against you, may God cause them to come into confusion. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray. Verse 26. Last scripture. Verse 26. He said, let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion. Ah, I wish you understood what that meant. Who rejoiced at my heart. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor. Who exalt themselves against me. In the next two minutes, I'd like you to take these two scriptures and cry to God. Lord, let these scriptures be manifested in my life. Anyone that plots my heart, anyone that plots my downfall, let them be brought to mutual confusion. Let them be brought to shame. Let them be brought to dishonor. Everyone that has vowed that I will always know shame. May they never know peace. In the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Seke paradia kata iso brasa kabala Ah, 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 ah,
To the setting of the same, your name is to be ah. Please lift your hands. As I pray now, there will be massive deliverances. The fire of God will descend in this place. Chains will be broken right now. The Bible declares in Isaiah 50 verse 5, verse 4 and 5, it said, The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned, that I will know how to speak a word in due season to him who is weary. God has anointed my tongue with his fire. Lift your hands. And right now in the name of Jesus, every orchestration of darkness that is well rooted in your life, every plot of the enemy every machination of hell that has been carefully confiscated in your life by the sword of the lord and by the fire of the holy ghost i command it to be destroyed now i command it to be destroyed now 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 in the name of Jesus every arrow of hell that was fired against you with or without your notice and is responsible for your pain is responsible for your predicament is responsible for your stagnation is responsible for unexplainable circumstances around your life I uproot that arrow now and I reverse it to the sender I reverse it to the sender I reverse it to the sender in the name of Jesus. Hear me, lift your hands. Everyone that is a victim of witchcraft attack, everyone that is held on by the claws of witchcraft, your destiny has been trapped in a pot. I'm seeing a pot, a calabash. That's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. And I see fire descend to destroy that calabash. Anyone whose destiny has been trapped in the coven of witchcraft by the fire. I declare that you are released by fire. Be 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 released by fire. In the name of Jesus. Just help them for me. 
every chain of stagnation every chain of delay every padlock makoto barukate agrata kabasika i come as a voice of deliverance upon mount zion there shall be deliverance i command those chains to be broken now i command those padlocks to be broken now chains be broken now in the name of jesus for he has broken the gates of bars and cut the bars of iron asunder every satanic gate every satanic prison the power of god will come on some people right now everyone who is trapped in any satanic prison now whether prison of doubt anxiety depression fear poverty lack stagnation delay near success syndrome failure bad luck reproach by the power that descended at midnight when paul and silas prayed i command those prison doors to open now I command those prison doors to open now and I lose your destiny I lose your soul I lose your life out of that prison come out of that prison come out of that prison come out of that prison, of that prison. in the name of Jesus Christ Thou art a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, a priesthood that is stronger than the priesthood of Levi. I stand by the rod of that priesthood. I speak against ancestral covenants. I speak against bloodline patterns, mistakes that are repeated in every generation, that is haunting you, that is haunting your destiny. I cancel it forever by the blood. I cancel it forever by the blood. I cancel it forever by the blood. In the name of Jesus. This night, I declare your liberty by the Spirit of God. I declare your liberty. I declare your liberty. I declare your liberty. Just be calm a little bit. Lift your hands, please. I see the anointing resting upon some people for speed. That's what I'm hearing. Speed. The anointing for speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. I stretch my hands. Let that grace come on you now. And everything that has been slow in your life. Experience supernatural speed. This is seven super Sundays. The season of the supernatural. I declare experience speed experience speed by the anointing let that mantle for speed rest upon your life rest upon your life in the name of Jesus may the grace of favor rest upon your life in this season the favor of God that connects you to destiny help us. Let it rest upon your life from today. Wherever your helpers are, I force them by prophecy into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is yours that has been withheld. Everything that is yours that is hanging. Whether in the spirit or in the physical. We force it to manifest in your life this season. We force it to manifest in your life this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your lives and I declare from today. Experience the miraculous. In your finances. In your marriage. Anyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I command that your womb, are, your womb is open tonight. Let the doors of your womb be open tonight. We declare according to the time of life, we come back with your testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let every aspect of your life experience the miracles in this season. I declare that you will remain healthy in this season. 
in the name of Jesus Christ and the final prayer I will pray for you oh two more first of all your finance that in the name of Jesus Christ let the wind of abundance blow around your life some of you have sown seeds you have fasted you have prayed you have done everything now i speak by prophecy let the wind of abundance blow upon your life in the name of jesus christ from today no more lack no more lack no more lack in the name of jesus christ. And finally, I prayed it for you last week. I'm praying it for you again. I activate upon your life a spiritual anti-missile defense system. Hmm. From tonight, anything that is launched against you by the enemy, it will return back to the sender. It will return back to the sender. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by day and night that you are defended. You are covered by the blood. You are surrounded and shielded by the fire of the Holy Ghost. It says in Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5, I shall be to them a wall of fire and the glory in their midst. From today you are shielded by fire. In the name of Jesus Christ the courage to prosper the grace to excel in all that you do rest upon your life from today rest upon your life from today in the name of jesus christ and finally for your spiritual life the grace to fly the grace to run and not be weary the grace to walk and not faint in the name of jesus let it rest upon your life let it rest upon your prayer life. Rest upon your study of the word. Rest upon your fasting life. I ignite the fire for spiritual activities around your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare it is well with you. Go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus precious name we pray. Please, while we are standing, let me make an altar call before we depart tonight. If you are here, everybody standing, you are here and you know that you need to make your ways right with the Lord. Or you want to surrender to Jesus, either for the first time or afresh. You want to be right with him. Everybody standing, but no movement anywhere, please. I'd like you to raise your right hand where you are. I'm going to pray for you. Raise your right hand high so I can see you. All standing, please. You want to say yes to Jesus. You want to make your ways right with the Lord. You want to surrender to him afresh. You want to walk with him in this month of April and beyond. Lift your right hand and I'm going to pray for you. Don't be ashamed. Or you know you are here. You are not sure if Jesus comes this night. If you will make heaven. Raise your right hand. There's such a thing as the assurance of salvation. Please lift your right hand. I want to see you where you are. I'm seeing one hand at the back. Dear God bless you lift it up very well lift it up very well if your hand is lifted up please walk to the front i want to pray for you quickly unashamedly walk to the front celebrate them as they come if god is speaking to you right now join them if you feel convicted in your heart that is the holy spirit convicting you join them quickly quickly you want to be saved you want to love the lord jesus you want to make heaven if Jesus returns. Clap, they are coming. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you. Oh Lord, every that I take. Every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way in me. Please stretch your hands towards them and pray for them. 
if you know you need to join them please run out fast and join them before the prayer is concluded quickly let Jesus save your soul and draw you close to himself those of you in front please put your right hand on your chest and I want you to passionately repeat this prayer after me say Lord Jesus I come to you today I surrender my life to you I declare that from today you are my Lord and Savior thank you for saving me in Jesus name amen please keep your right hand on your chest and lift your left hand up I want to pray for you Lord I pray for these ones by the authority of Scripture I declare that their sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost I break the power of sin Satan hell and death of their life every addiction over their life is broken in the name of Jesus Christ fill them with your spirit and may they serve you all the days of their lives in Jesus precious name we pray amen and amen God bless you please turn to your left there's a lady waving her hand turn to your left now there's a lady, lady waving her hands walk straight to her our counselors will attend to you quickly God bless you can you clap for souls hallelujah were we blessed tonight all right i think i did 15 minutes beyond my time i told you last week that we'll close 7 30. so i did 15 minutes away i think i tried today amen so i apologize for that but thank you for your patience please instead of sitting down just keep standing and listen to this announcement before we go um many of you are already aware of the 30 nights of supernatural favor that is going on online how many of you have been part of it this week all right so go on uh, my youtube channel apostle jonathan lagang or go on the ministry's facebook page party nights of supernatural favor we started since the first on monday tonight is going to be another night tonight oh tonight all right one hour of commanding the favor of god through prayers over your life and we're already seeing testimonies amen and amen so make sure you are part of it and your life will never remain the same in jesus name the time is 12 midnight to 1 a.m so tonight make sure you get hooked up and stream on um our next week's service is going to be at compassion church so please uh, locate compassion church along Damboa road there beside dunamis next sunday our worker service is tomorrow by 4 30 p.m at final hall if you want to join the workforce please make sure you are there by 4 30 p.m tomorrow at final hall and then finally um one of the platforms of this ministry breakfast prayer initiative where we gather christian professionals to pray and command the favor of god over their businesses and their jobs um, will be having a program in this month of april this month of april we'll be celebrating three years on that platform so we are marking it with a conference on the 19th to 20th of this month friday saturday the registration is already on um is there any flyer to that accord yes the registration is online strategic leaders business summit all right and the team for the program is dominion in the marketplace it's going to be an exciting time we have guests coming from abuja that will be a blessing to us for two days amen so um if you are a christian professional and you are not part of bpi ensure that you are part of bpi do me a favor um where, where are public relations officials where are they uh please is there a desk at the back there's a desk at the back walk up to them and they will help you get registered and give you other details about it okay or consult our um, social media handles for more information please if you are here you are a christian professional you need to be part of that conference it's going to be life-changing registration is on and will be closing on the 12th 
of this month all right is it 12th now or okay after next week is it 15th or all right oh the registration will close three days to the program so make sure you register and god will bless you in jesus name amen and amen surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord amen and amen god bless you in jesus name our students i believe the bus will be outside waiting for you those of you going to bama road the bus will be outside waiting for you the rest of you see you at compassion church next week god bless you <laughs>